So I'm living my life just to sing and be free and be free from LA to New York, from New York to LA, Ooh, from New York to LA. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hello, I'm Ben Rayner. Welcome to the Chesterfield, our brand new show. And I'm Miss Gway, and welcome to the Chesterfield. The Chesterfield is a show where Canadian artists talk about their favorite Canadian art. Each week, one of us will be video chatting with a Canadian you know about the music, films, books, and other art that inspired them. The Chesterfield is brought to you by Friends of Canadian Broadcasting, which is a grassroots movement of Canadians just like you who care about telling their own stories. Now, Friends is funded completely by individual donors. So if you want to get involved and maybe help us make some more episodes, there's a link to our website, the video description to follow, where you can sign up, get some more info, maybe make a donation. And in doing so, you qualify for pretty cool giveaways once in a while, like vinyl records, signed books, lots of cool stuff. Friends.ca. Just check it out. Thanks, Ben. You know, it's always important to talk about Canadian culture, but right now more than ever, we need to support our artists and celebrate our own creations. I'm excited to be here with you, Ben, and with you viewers to dive into these real conversations. So let's get this show started. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna get out of your way and let you get Ms. Jan Arden on the line, is quay? And I'll see all of you next week. Our first Chesterfield guest is a true Canadian icon. Jan Arden can do it all. She's a multi-platinum selling, award-winning singer and songwriter. She's the author of four books with a brand new memoir out this month called If I Knew Then, Finding Wisdom in Failure and Power in Aging. And she's the star of her very own TV show, Jan. The second season is out now on CTV and she's currently working on the third. Now please welcome the woman who makes me laugh uncontrollably and sing at volumes that nobody needs to be hearing, Jan Arden. Hello, Jan. Hi there. It's so great to be here. Go um, on. I am, I, I am in a bathroom. Yes. Uh, and I just want to preface this to everybody that I was all organized and I showered and did my hair this morning and uh, I'm out working and I'm on the West Coast with a colleague of mine in a in a cabin that somebody lent us, which is always wonderful. So I have good internet, which is great. But 20 minutes before our conversation was supposed to start, a helicopter uh, started bringing supplies to a little island that's about, oh, I'd say half a mile from here. And I guess they're building a home and they were dropping construction materials. So I'm typing your producer madly and I'm like, gosh, there's a helicopter like hovering over the house, so it's still going. I apologize because Isque has gone to so much trouble to look how beautiful she looks in her beautiful setting. And I had such a nice place for everyone to see, but here I am in the bathroom uh, with some hydrangeas. But I'm so happy to be here and I'm so grateful that you asked me. But everybody, thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening through to maybe not the greatest sound in the world. So. Uh, my apologies. Thank you for, you know, coming to hang out and chat and talk about some some of your favorite art. COVID has made me unbelievably nostalgic. I don't know about you, but I've been dipping back into really old memories and conversations with friends about stuff we did. Anyway, going back into the 70s when I was in high school, mm -hmm. um, 76 in particular, I was in ninth grade. And there was a French Canadian singer uh, and actress named Patsy Gallant. And I didn't know much about her. Canadian music was not the force that it was now, right. as we look, you know, 35, 40 years later. It was just this burgeoning thing. Although Quebec had a really strong, people were selling 300, 400,000 records within their province with French music. Right. She was Anglophone. She often, Patsy often would do uh, her French records, but she would then do a record which was unheard of in English for her English fans. Yeah. So yeah. in 76, she had a breakthrough song called From L.A. to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the album cover. It was a black, mostly background, and Patsy was in this red dress with blonde hair, red lips. And, you know, as a... 15 year old, 14 year old looking at this 
and hearing the song, which was disco and real true disco of the 70s. Mm -hmm. But her voice, uh, Patsy would be about 72 or 73 years old now, mm -hmm. but her, she was an impeccable singer. And it, the thing that really resonated for me was that she was Canadian. Right. And I hadn't heard of a lot of artists that were from Canada. Yeah. So that opened up this realm of possibility for me. Oh, that's that you could awesome. be from here and do something like that. And I believe it was a hit internationally for her. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, from, from what I've read, it has been a big hit for her internationally. And, and that was exactly the, the idea that I was seeing around as well, is that, you know, um, having that international exposure was a tough accolade for, for Canadian musicians to reach. I can only imagine what her team, the gears that they must have shifted to adapt to what started happening for her. She'd right. had hits in Quebec, but she'd never had hits outside of that. So all of a sudden the workload is multiplied, you know, yeah. incrementally. Yeah. But I just remember being in my mom's car driving probably to hockey practice. Oh, what a Canadian thing to do. <laughs> in my life. And then to the chorus, when, when the song kicked into the chorus, mm. from L.A. to New York, from New York to L.A. In my life, there's no place for the man that I love. So I'm living my life just to sing and be free and be free. From L.A. to New York, from New York to L.A. Ooh, from New York to L.A. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, uh, sorry, that, sorry that I put you through that, but no. uh, it was just, it was magical. And then, of course, as a kid, you're lying on the indoor outdoor carpeting in your parents' basement, <laughs> looking at the album cover. And I don't know about you, but when albums came out, you could take out the jacket, mm -hmm. and then you'd have all the lyrics, you'd have more pictures, a lot of them had big fold-out books. Album covers were like a foot by a foot, so 12 inch by 12 inch. And so there was a lot of room for content. And that was the, probably the thing I missed most when the formats changed into CDs. Even cassettes, you had fold outs that went on forever. You could have a booklet and a cassette and still have all your information. But then I got into Patsy's other stuff. And then I started listening to music in French. I had no idea, obviously, what she was saying, but. Um, she truly was a pioneer, I think, in the, the, the francophone, anglophone, crossing those invisible bridges between uh, the French culture of Quebec and, and, you know, New Brunswick and a lot of the Maritimes, there's a lot of French. Uh, there wasn't a lot of that in the West. Right. Did this inspire you? Did her, like, her presence inspire you? Um as Jen, the individual human, and as Jen, the musician, either or, more yeah. than that, like, yeah? I was already writing songs pretty much on a daily basis in 1976. Mm -hmm. um, I started writing songs at 10 or 11. They were all terrible. But, <laughs> you know, as I went through my teenage years, I got better, and I learned to sing better, and I was playing guitar better. But when I saw someone being theatrical and she, and she had her own TV show for a while right. as well. Right. And she was just so evocative oh. and sensual yeah. and feminine, but right. really edgy and strong the way she spoke and carried herself. Yeah. I don't know much about her personal life, but to me, she struck me as someone who, had so much confidence and self-esteem. And when I was growing up, I had confidence, but I didn't have self-esteem. And they do exist together. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, the, the song had nothing to do with my 14 year old life. Right. A woman traveling from New York to LA, Yeah. you know, looking for her man. I mean, I I, so it, could have been, it, could, it couldn't have been further away from yeah. my life, wearing my brother's jeans, on our acreage taking a yellow school bus right but 
it was the it really was that she was Canadian and I thought she was some far off from an exotic place and I never that changed something in my thinking mm. not that I was considering going into music because I didn't think someone like me could could do that right. that came from where I came from that wrote the kind of music that I was writing I didn't I didn't entertain it. I, I wanted to be a school teacher. Right. But for some reason, that just stuck with me. The song stuck with me. Her success stuck with me. The fact that she was so different stuck with me. Right. And it was a very impressionable age. Yeah. Um, around that time, too, I was totally immersed in singer-songwriters as well. But yeah. I think the performing part of Patsy's life. Yeah. It wasn't a girl hiding behind her guitar because I was listening to Janice Sean and Carly Simon and Joni Mitchell and Anne Murray and uh, I was listening to folk music, but everyone was kind of hidden behind a guitar, and she was out there in a skin tight red dress. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's hilarious is I was reading this McLean's article about her earlier and her let me just find the little spot here. So in one like in one of the sections of this article, it's quoted um that she you know, it, it acknowledges this, right? That she does come out and she's in these like very glitzy, glamorous, uh disco esque outfits right but it's it's interesting how um like almost snarky the media seemed to be about this woman who was doing this big thing and, and having these huge hits or this huge hit it doesn't surprise me yeah. because when you have a woman owning her power owning her sensuality owning her sexuality and they're coming in and just talking about, oh, she comes out in these glamorous gowns or whatever. I'm obviously paraphrasing right now. But just that, what? She was a, an unbelievable singer. But when you own yourself, and it, 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 it's, people want to steal from that somehow. I do, I've never understood the psychology behind it, ever. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just never have. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, she was a force to be reckoned with. And when you think back to the 70s in Canada, there was Gordon Lightfoot, there was uh, Neil Young, Leonard Cohen, Joni Mitchell, Anne Murray. I think Bachman Turner Overdrive was around a little bit. Probably the Guess Who with, with Burton Cummings. Yeah. There was a fistful of Canadian artists. Right. Not a lot. Yeah. And they yeah. were all doing really well internationally. Yeah. Which is hard to believe. But then you have this woman that's presenting something completely different. But I'm curious to know what you think makes Canadian content unique. Well, I think our geography has a lot to do with our social interactions with, with each other. It doesn't matter what part of Canada you live in. We're, we're situated so far north mm -hmm. that we deal with an awful lot of inclement weather. I think Canadians are rugged. I think they're no nonsensical. They're they're just no. They just do what they do. Yeah. And I hope that we have that autonomy. I hope we remain individual to ourselves and not be so bombarded with American culture and American problems and American politics and American blah 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 mm -hmm. that we lose sight of how unique we are. I mean, I love supporting Canadian art and Canadian music and yeah. the infrastructure of Canadian music. I think it's really important to keep that intact. Yeah. I think the CBC has always been very instrumental. Yeah. Uh, and people go after that all the time because mm -hmm. of taxpayer money and things like that. But I'm telling you, without it, we wouldn't have seen the kind of music coming out of this country that we did in the 60s and the 70s. Right. Um, there, it's it's important to have a voice of of your culture and your people, uh, and and I think people are they get kind of angry about it and bitter about it because there's a lot of people that still feel like the arts is a waste of time. Mm. But another thing that's happened during COVID is people have understood mm -hmm. the importance of art. Art has been at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. Wasn't that wild that it, it literally, it was quite literally was within an hour. It felt like everything was normal life and then a switch just flicked and the world changed. 
Yes. Yeah. But so we we're built for change, Esquay. We're built yeah. for change. Does that leave you feeling optimistic about the future of Canadian television and music? Very much so. You you were mentioning at the top that you're in this beautiful bathroom because you are out writing a second season to the Gen Show. Third, third season now. You're on the third season. Yeah. We are right smack dab in the middle of writing season three. Three. So three. it's, yeah, it's been a, a, the, one of the biggest surprises of my career, but I'm having a great time. Amazing. And, uh, you know, creative people create things. That's, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And I was always inspired as a kid by like Bette Midler and, Barbara Streisand and I was always inspired by those women that sang and did comedy. Yeah. And were also very dramatic and they did movies and they yeah. did concerts. So the people that inspired me growing up, uh, Patsy Glant is no different. You know, she was, she's a theatrical actress and a singer. Yeah. And I just thought, why not? It seems yeah. like it's all in the same basket. Well, I have one final parting question for you, my friend. Do you think that you will be writing in oh no <laughs> it, for your show for the third season do you feel like you would be writing patsy on to your show is there a possibility oh, that patsy I, Blunt might have a special feature in the third season of the jan show just saying curious not not the third season oh. but now that you're saying the actual words to me just now, which is something that I never considered in my wildest dreams, right. what I would not do to have Patsy Gallant come and be in season four when the COVID restrictions are lifted, when we're traveling a little bit more freely. Yes, Patsy, season four, we're coming for you, please. And it, the scene, you could be like in a restaurant, I recognize you and I freak the hell out and I ruin your entire lunch. <laughs> you don't even have to learn a lot of lines patsy i swear mind you you could act circles around anybody so thank you thank you for that suggestion hey you know i'm just i'm i'm about planting seeds right watching watching how things can grow uh jen thank you for speaking so passionately passionately about patsy a final thought for you just because you've now planted this seed yeah. About planting seeds. My grandmother used to tell me, my mom's mom, yeah. to spread myself thin. Ah. And people tell us as little girls, especially all the time, to not spread yourself thin. Yeah. And my grandmother said, spread yourself thin. She said, well, seeds cannot all grow in one spot. She said, you never do that. You cast them as far and as wide as you can mm -hmm. to give each one of those seeds the opportunity to grow. And I'll tell you what, at eight years old, that stuck with me like, you know, like nothing else ever did. And I know it was just a thrown out comment to me and probably something her mother said to her. Yeah, yeah. But little girls out there, little boys out there, spread yourself thin. Do all the things you want to do. You don't have to pick one. The days are over where someone says to you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. And my answer to that is, I want to be everything. Yeah. And I want to do everything. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm excited for all that you get to create right now. So enjoy we'll and we'll see you soon. Yes, you will. Thanks, Jen. Thank you.